can speak that has a divine backing is the word of God. That which bewitching your life, bewitching your marriage, bewitching your children, in the name of Jesus, I terminate her power. Lakini haitaweze kana bila Mungu. Daktari hataweza. Lakini such as I have, I give to you. What is it that you have? And you cannot have without dwelling in his presence. First Kings 17 verse 1. Good. Aha. First Kings 17 verse 1. Are you there, please? Come on, talk to me. Are you there? First Kings 17, verse 1. 1, 2, 3. Look at the screen and say, let's read. 1, 2, 3, go. Uh-huh. Habians of Gilead. Say to her. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There shall be no or deal except that somebody say except at my word. Again, except at my word. Okay. Let's go to Second Kings chapter 7. Verse 1. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 1. Then Elisha said, Shall we read? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, Elisha said. Elijah said. Okay. That's where my topic is. The first scripture we read is Elijah said. The second scripture, Elisha said. I am talking on opening the heavens by divine decrees. Opening the heavens by divine decrees. In other words, by speaking declarations. By making declarations of the word of God. You speak the word and you open the heavens by divine decrees. You open the, the heavens by divine decrees. By what you say with your mouth. Amen. I have often said, and I will say it again. Your mouth is not a decoration. Your mouth is for making decrees. Not a decoration. It's for making declarations. Second Kings chapter 17. The children of Israel have departed from the Lord. They have departed from God. They are worshipping idols. And Elijah the prophet is so much disturbed. That the people have departed from a true living God. And they are worshipping idols. And I believe he goes to prayers and he asks God, what can I do that people may turn to the living God? After a while, I believe God told him what to do. Because Elijah came and said to the children of Israel and to the king Ahab, he said, as the Lord God lives. He does not even say as the, that says the Lord. He says as the Lord God says. Lives. As the Lord God lives. There shall be no dew. There shall be no rain. Except at my word. Not at the word of God. At my own word. 
immediately the heaven was shut because of the word of a man of God. And in this case, I am not talking as a pastor. I am talking of a child of God. Remember, you are a prophet of your own. Never forget that. Look at your neighbor and tell them you are a prophet of your own. Aha. Uh -huh. That is what I'm talking about. Your problem is not necessarily demonic. Your problem is individualistic. If there is such a, a language that I can use. In other words, if you make up your mind that with God you will succeed, you will. Because God can never lose a battle. Huh. You with God, you are too powerful. No devil, no witch can stop you from going where God wants you to go and from reaching where God wants you to reach. <laughs> okay. He said, except at my word, there shall be no rain. And then he said, later, if you have read First Kings, he went later and he said to the king in chapter 18, after a long time, he said, now there can be rain. Go and tell Ahab there shall be rain. I've decided now people that are turning to God, there shall be rain. He shut the heavens, he opened the heavens by the declarations of his own mouth. By the declarations of his own mouth. That is 1 Kings chapter number 17. Now let's go to 2 Kings chapter number 7. You know, a child of a lion is a lion. A child of God is God. And you are gods. We read that one in John 10, 34 and 35. It said you are gods. It said that the scripture cannot be broken. Is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. And verse 35, Jesus said, if he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. I am saying that to say, Elisha was mentored by Elijah. So what he saw his father do, he did. He said, I can open the heavens, I can shut the heavens. Oh, powerful. I can open the heavens. I can shut the heavens. But this time, there was famine in the land. A severe famine. They began to eat their own children. After eating all the animals, eating the dung of the animals, everything was finished. Trees were finished. They began eating their own children. And the man of God said, God, it cannot be so. We are your children. What can I do? He also went to the king and he said, As the Lord lives whom I serve, tomorrow there shall be food. <laughs> tomorrow there shall be food sold here. Tomorrow there shall be food. May I speak as a, a prophet? Tomorrow your life will be different. Uh, you did not hear me. Tomorrow you will be more blessed than what you are today. You are going forward from beginning tomorrow, beginning today, in the name of Jesus. Okay. And for sure, the Bible says, there was a man in verse number 2 of 2 Kings, who never believed the word of God. He said, even if God, leave alone you, you are a human being. Even if God opens the windows of heaven, can that happen? Then Elisha, the man of God said, you will see the food, but you will not eat. But I came here to declare this morning, you will enjoy every blessing. Every food you see, you will eat it in Jesus' name. Hello, I came to let you know this morning, no devil, no witch can stop you from eating what God gives you. I came here to say this morning that Jehovah will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Mm, God will. God will. God will. God will. In the name of the Lord. So, having laid that foundation, I want to share with us on opening the heavens by divine decrees. By divine decrees. 
That's very important. Remember, the book of Proverbs 18.21, the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So whatever you say, you can bring life to your situation or you can bring death to your situation. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. In other words, your tongue has power and authority to change your life. Job 22. Job 22 verse 29. Job 22 verse 29. The Bible says, You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. May that scripture be fulfilled in your life. It says you will declare a thing and it will be established for you. I want you from today to begin to declare things that you want to see in your life. Begin to declare things that you want to see in your life. To want to see in your family. You want to see in your business. It says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. Very powerful. Verse number 29 says, when men cast you down, I like this, but you will say, exaltation will come and exaltation will come. Hello? You will say. So if a witch says you will die, you say I will not die, the witch will die on my behalf. They will die. If people say you are finished, you say I am not finished, I am doing better than what you are saying, it shall be done. It shall be done. Very, very, very important. Having laid that foundation, Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, I like the Amplified Bible of that scripture. It says like this, you will also decide and decree a thing. In other words, the life you want, you are the one to decide. The life you want to lead is the one you decide. God will not decide for you. He has already decided. God decided before you were born that you will be blessed. God decided that you will live a better life. God decided before you were born, when Jesus died on the cross, that by his stripes you were healed. God decided many, many years ago, before we were born, before we were even conceived in our mother's womb, thousands and thousands of years, he decided that <laughs> when you serve the Lord your God, he shall bless your bread, he shall bless your water, and he will take away sickness and disease from you. When you serve God. He decided a long time ago. Now it is your turn to decide. He says you shall also decide. He said. And you shall make a decree. A declaration. Of what you want. And the Lord will establish that thing. When you make a decision. Okay. Let me back it up. With Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. The Bible says, Behold, I place before you blessing and a curse, life and death. Deuteronomy 30, 19. It says, Therefore choose life in order that you may live, you and your children or descendants. It says, I'm placing something before you. And even if you don't believe you, I am calling the heavens and I call the earth to be a witness. That before you, I have blessed a blessing. That before you, because of the sin of Adam, there is death. Because I cannot change it, Adam established that one. I put before you a blessing, that was what I am doing, but Adam brought a curse. In other words, God is telling you and I, there is a curse, there is blessing. There is life, there is death. But God gives you the right advice. He says, I command you to choose life. I command you to choose blessing. So that you and your children may live and enjoy what I give you. So it is our turn to decide what we want. And what you want is what you shall get. How? By making declarations 
Where? In the presence of the Almighty. Hey, Shakalaba. Reke toko prosim. I see your challenges coming to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? You are deciding and the almighty God is bringing a blessing on your way. Hmm. Very important. So, the life you are living, don't blame God. Your decision and your mouth decide what you shall have. Elisha and Elijah they changed the situation by what? By their mouth. So the negative things we are always speaking, negative things. Oh life is like this. Oh this is the way things are. Oh my gosh. Oh my God I'm dying. You will die. Because you shall have what you say. The Bible says so. What is a decree? Divine means of God. The word divine means it is of God. Making a divine decree is, a de is making things of God. Speaking that of God. A decree means an official command or order. You give an official command or order. And in our case here, you are giving a command and an order that has a divine backing. It has what? A divine backing. You say things that have a divine backing. A decree means to give an official order which has force. I like that one. To give an official order which has force. I like that one. And that official order that has force is the word of God. This is our court order. This is our divine order. Hey, Shandala Broshe, Katala Broshe. This is our order. So he says you must make an official order, an official command that has a divine backing. And listen to me, child of God. The only thing that you can speak that has a divine backing is the word of God. The only thing that you can speak that has a divine backing is the word of God. So you begin to say the word of God concerning your life. By the stripes of Jesus I am healed. It has a divine backing. It has a divine backing. I, you say for example, by, I cannot be poor. Why? The blessing of God makes rich and that's no sorrow. The blessing is on my head. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you have not gotten me. You have not gotten me. Let me give you a scripture so that you can be claiming it day after day. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 6 and 7. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 6 and 7. Hmm. Blessings are on the head of the righteous. Where are blessings? Come on, talk to me. Where are the blessings? Where are the blessings? Somebody say on my head. Come on, say on my head. According to the scripture, where is the blessing? And the blessing of God makes rich and has no sorrow. Okay, verse number seven. The memory of the righteous is what? The memory of the righteous is what? Look at your neighbor and tell them I cannot be confused. My memory is blessed. Come on, I cannot be. Okay, put your, head on, your hand on your head and say, I cannot be confused. Louder, my memory is blessed. Again, I want to hear you, my memory is blessed. My memory is blessed. The blessings of God are on my head. Please say it, the blessing of God are on my head. Receive it in Jesus' name. No confusion. I said no confusion from today. You will make the right decisions. You will take the right steps. You will go to the right direction. Very important. Very important. No more confusion. 
I will not pastor confused people. Their memory is blessed. You will not be confused of what to do. Okay, you will not be confused. If a chicken, at the kenda kwa jirani, ikifika sa kumi na mbili inajua kwao, you will not be confused. You are a child of God. <laughs> Hello? So, you will not sleep with anybody who is not your wife because you are not confused. You will not sleep with anybody who is not your husband because you are not confused. Huh? I know my wife. I cannot confuse her with Pastor Rotich's wife. Because I'm not. Kama kuku inajua mahali pa kwenda. Wewe ni kuku. So every chicken here, I cancel that mentality. Every chicken mentality, I destroy that mentality. Shout a better hallelujah. Somebody say, Tibim. <laughs> Hello? I decree you will not be confused. You will not. From today, I decree your memory is blessed. I declare in the name of Jesus, under this prophetic anointing, by the hand of God on my life, you will not be confused. I decree your mind is blessed in the name of Jesus. From today, no confusion. I decree you are blessed. Very important. Very important. Please be seated. Let me finish when I'm finishing. Very important. Very important. Now, listen. Listen to this. This one will be very important for you. Write down Matthew 12, 37. Matthew 12, 37. Matthew 12, 37. And then lift up your head and read up there. Read up there. One, two, three. Let's go. Uh-huh. 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 Now, I want you to know if you have a, a physical Bible, little Bible, it is Jesus who is talking. It's not Peter. It's not an apostle. Jesus is talking. He said, by your own words, you will be justified. By your own words, you will be condemned. In other words, what you say is what I operate with. What you say is what the devil operates with. When you say you are finished, the devil takes it and he finishes you. Even God takes it and he says, okay, since you have said you are finished, I cannot protect you. Numbers 28, Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. God tells Moses, go and tell my people, the children of Israel. Said, one, two, three, lift up your, your eyes. Please, let's read. Say to them, as I live, change the Lord. Just as you have spoken in my hearing. Aha. Uh -huh. You say I am sick. God says, I have heard you say, I will do to you. Let me give you the background of this scripture. The children of Israel began to complain in the wilderness. Were there no graves in Egypt? Why did you bring us here to die in the wilderness? It is better we were buried in Egypt or we die here rather than going to Canaan. And God says, since we have said it, I will do to you. And they all died except those who were born in the wilderness. Those are the ones who entered Canaan and two guys from Egypt, Joshua and Caleb only. Why? Because as for them, they said, no. God said he has given us the land. We are no longer grasshoppers. Hey! We, can, we are able to possess the land. And they possessed according to their mouth. They were able to take the land according to their mouth. That's why you should speak what God speaks concerning you. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Even when you look you are beaten and you are down. 
You say, no, I know the word of God says, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Very important. I see you at the top in 2019. Ah, I see you at the top in 2019. I see you at the top in 2019. I see you at the top in 2019. It says, when they cast you down, when men, when men, when men cast you down, you will speak with your mouth and you shall be exalted. When they spoil your name, you will speak and it shall be well with you. Hey! Oh, Jesus. I see God breaking a chain that has bound somebody. I command that chain broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Be seated. Chains are broken. I, I saw a rope and a chain break like this. Pow! Whatever had bound you in the name of Jesus, Jehovah has set you free right now. Jehovah has set you free right now. Testimonies will begin to follow you. Oh, Jesus. Why make, listen to this. Jesus said, it is your word that will bring judgment to you. It is your word that will set you free. Justified. Just setting you free. Your words. <laughs> Write this down. It will bless you. Your words. Number one. They confirm you. Your words do what? Confirm. So if you say I am blessed, it, it confirms. Your word confirm you. Number two, your word conform you. That means they change you. Conform. They change you. Whatever you don't like in your life, you speak against it, then you get the results you want. The desired result. Somebody say a better amen. amen. And then number three, the, your words transform you. They change you completely. They transform. They confirm. They conform. C-O-N-F-O-R. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this word. But what you want when you speak, you confirm it. You become it. You confirm it. You turn into it. Why do we make divine decrees? Words that have a divine backing. Why do we make divine decrees? Words that have a divine backing. Why? Why do we make them? Number one, divine decrees command divine elevation and establishment. Divine decrees command divine elevation and divine establishment. Divine elevation and establishment. They command. That one we saw in Job 22. Verse 28, you shall decree a thing and it will be established for you. So they command divine elevation. Verse 29, when they cast you down, you shall say, there is a lifting up. And the Lord will do it for you. Because you are a humble person. He will save you. So making decrees, that is words that have a divine backing, they will bring elevation and establishment. 2019, I decree, may God elevate you and may God establish you. May God lift you up financially. May God establish you in your health. May God establish you in prosperity. I decree and declare, may that be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, divine decrees breaks and eradicates barrenness. Divine decrees break and eradicate or eradicate 
barrenness. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 16 and 17. Elisha said about this time next year. Remember he's not praying. He called the woman. He said come here. Said about this time next year you shall embrace a son. Say, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to me, your maid servant. Verse number 17. But the woman conceived and bore a son at the, when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. I decree and declare as Elisha, every barrenness in your life comes to an end. In the name of Jesus, about this time next year, may you embrace a son. Financial barrenness comes to an end. Hey, it comes to an end. Number three. Divine decrease silences and defeats your enemies. I like that one. Divine decrease silences and defeat your enemies. Ha. That enemy in your life, 2019, Sunday 17th of March, is the end of that enemy in your life. You did not hear me. I did not like you a better amen. That enemy that has been frustrating you, that witch, that demonic agent, throwing arrows of sickness and disease in your body, that witch bewitching your business, that which bewitching your life, bewitching your marriage, bewitching your children. In the name of Jesus, I terminate her power. I terminate her power. I command defeat in Jesus' precious name. Why did I say that? Luke 21 verse 15. Luke 21 verse 15. For Jesus is talking here again. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. In other words, what you say, your enemies will bow to it. What you say, your enemies will not resist. If you say, enemy, in the name of Jesus, go. In the name of Jesus, the enemy will say, I obey. He will go. Oh, Jesus, give us understanding. Lord Jesus, give us understanding. Say, what I, I will give you a mouth since you are born again, since you are my child, and your enemy will not resist it. Your enemy will not resist it. From today, as you go home, I want you to speak any witch that has been bewitching my life, that has been disturbing my life, this boss who wants to fire me, Father, fire him. I speak, fire him. Oh Lord, give me favor before him. Your enemy, your enemy will begin to love you. Father, this boss who wants to fire me, let him write a letter of recommendation for my promotion. Ah, hey. Goliath came and stood. He said, Give me a man. And all the children of Israel, mighty men of war, they were called valiant men of war, they were running. Just by talking, not by war. Give me a man. Everybody went. Then David came bringing food. Then Goliath stood. Give me a man. Everybody ran. David stood with his food. He said, ah, why are they running? Just because the man is speaking. He said, what shall be done to a man who kills this man? Who defies the armies of the Lord? He said he shall be given a wife for free. No dowry? Yes, for free. Okay, he said, that is what I like. I like that one. I want a wife. That one I like. Your family will not pay taxes. Okay, that is what I want. He said, I will bring this man down. Then David took a sling to cut the story short and stones. And the Bible says, he went to, the, to Goliath. And he said, Goliath said, am I a dog that you are giving me a small boy? I will cut your head and give it to dogs. 
David answered, because what you say is what God will establish. Is what will defeat your enemies or give power to your enemies. David said in verse 45, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts whom you have defied. The Lord, today, not tomorrow, today, he will deliver you into my hands, not tomorrow. The same head you are saying you will cut my head. I will cut your head and I will give it to dogs. He took a sling. Pop! Goliath was down. Now listen to this. David had no sword. He went and took the sword of the enemy. Cut his head with his own sword. This is what I am saying. Whatever the enemy is using to bewitch you. The same will turn against him. And kill him in 2019. Shout hallelujah. If they have cast you to become poor. They will become poor. You will become rich. If they have cast you with the sickness. They shall be sick. You shall be healed. Hey. Hey. I decree your enemies are defeated. 2019 your enemies are defeated. 2019, you shall eat your food in the presence of your enemies. Thank you, Jesus. Number four, very quickly, because of time. <laughs> Divine decrees. Number five, command life and progress. Stagnation comes to an end this day as I'm talking in the name of Jesus. I'm sure of that why I pray this week I've been in the presence of the Lord. I, was, I woke up early this morning and was speaking in tongues. Talking to God concerning your life. That God may bless you. Before I came to church a long while ago, I talked to God. Every Sunday, not only today, many days, weekly. So today you will go forward. I mean, you will have life and you will progress. No premature death. I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Ezekiel 11, verse 1 to 13, you can read. You remember Pelatia? The people were sitting there and saying people cannot build. You remember the story. You cannot build. This city is a port. And the people are meat. They are flesh. Okay. God told Ezekiel. Simple. Make some declarations. He said prophesy. Make some declaration. Let's see what will happen to them. Then the Bible says in verse number 4. As I began to prophesy, verse number 13, verse number 13, let's, let's read verse number 13. Ezekiel 11, verse number 13. Now it happened. While I prophesied, I was prophesying, Pelate the son of Benaiah died. <laughs> while I was to, to, to prophesy, to make declaration of what God is saying. While I prophesied, he died. The one who was resisting them from building, from going forward, the one who wanted to eat them died. Whoever wants to bury you, may they be buried in your place. Whoever wants you to fail, may they fail in your place. And from that time, the children of Israel began to build houses. They lived because they were no longer meat. You will not be eaten. I say you will not be eaten. This land of Kishi will not swallow you before your time. In the name of Jesus, I decree life and progress. May you go forward in every area. The jobless, may you find a job. Hello? Not necessarily employment. May you find your own business. Now, listen to me. Listen to me clearly. Please listen to me. It is my prayer in this church. That you will not only be employed, but you will be employers. That is my prayer. That's why I'm praying 
that many of you, God will give you ideas of businesses, of great supermarkets, great hardwares. I pray, may you receive it in the name of Jesus, so that you may become employers. What am I saying? I am saying begin to progress. Can I have better amen? Begin to progress. Every area of your life where there is stagnation in the name of Jesus, I break it. I break it. Number five. Divine decrees commands divine provision. Divine decrees commands divine provision. Second Kings chapter seven. We read that one. Verse 1, Elisha said, Tomorrow there shall be food. Verse number 18, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. It came to pass, as he had spoken. May God give you divine provision, 2019. Say 2019 received divine provision. Finally, brethren, as I conclude this service, divine decrees eradicates curses and bestows blessing. Divine decrees eradicates curses and bestows blessings. That is my prayer for you. That's my prayer for you. May blessing come upon you from this time forward. You did. I know you are writing, but please give me your ears as you write. From today, may blessing come upon you and may curses be eradicated out of your life. From today. Whatever curse it is, curse of sickness, curse of premature death in your family, curse of no marriage, curse of poverty, whatever it is, I break it by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Whatever I am saying, one word will help you. Do you know one word? Last Sunday. Tell your neighbor, perception. What you perceive is what you are receiving right now. If you perceive me as a man of God, curses are being broken. They are being broken right now. Now, Jacob cast one of his child by the name Reuben. He said, Reuben, you messed up. I think Reuben, Jacob had a, a few wives, so Reuben took one of the wives and slept with her, his own son. Then Jacob said, because you've defiled your, brother's, your father's bed, you are cast. You will never excel. I don't know who spoke words against you. Because of the mistake you did or the mistake of your fathers. Whatever it is today, I cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hello? Any witch that spoke against your life. Because your picture was taken to their altar. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. Reuben never ex excelled. He never went forward because of that curse. But later, Moses came. And I come as a Moses this morning. I say I come as a Moses this morning. Deuteronomy 33 verse number 6. And he said, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be filled. Up to this time, he was not excelling. No matter how many wives he married, they were not increasing. So, Moses came. He said, from today, Reuben, you shall live. I cancel premature death. Reuben, you shall not die. And I speak the same words over you right now. He said, 
and you shall no longer be few. In other words, every curse of your father, of limitation, of you not excelling, I break it. And from that time, Reuben began to excel. Reuben became great. His children became great. I see you becoming great in your time. Hallelujah! So I came here with one purpose. When Papa Bishop Makarioki was giving me the ordination certificate, consecration, you remember the words he said? He said, we are not cursors, we are blessers. And he said, in case I curse you, you can go to him and he will cancel the curse. So I came here as a blesser and not as a cursor. Today I want to bless you. That's why I came this morning. I want to bless you this day. And I want to stand on the altar of the most high God. To speak a blessing over your life. No matter what people say against you. No matter what your parents or any elderly or any witch has spoken in secret. I came here to cancel it in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with long life. I bless you with health. I bless you with prosperity. I bless you with children. In the name of Jesus, I bless you with long life. I bless your children. I bless you with divine health. You will not die prematurely. May God give you life. May God give you prosperity. May God overcome your enemies. May God destroy every enemy of your life. I bless you. I bless you. May your hand, your hand handle money. May your hands handle prosperity. May you build houses. May you drive good cars. May you have money to bless the less fortunate. May you bless the orphans. May you become so rich. And you become like Abraham. Whoever curses you is cursed. Whoever blesses you is blessed. I bless you in the name of Jehovah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you under the Holy Spirit of God. Go and prosper. Go and make it in life. May you have a job. May you have a great business. Hallelujah. May businesses come to you. I decree and declare. Your mind is blessed. Your memory is blessed. Your health is blessed. Oh, you will no longer be confused. I decree and declare to my daughters who are not married. You will have a great wedding. You will have a good man to marry you. I decree and declare to my young men. You will have a great wife. You will have a good wife. In the name of Jesus.